An open source model from China nipping at GPT-4's heels? Today we're talking Alibaba's Quen and much, much more. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. One of the things we've been talking about quite a bit recently is the fact that still no one can beat GPT-4. Even as we see companies like Amazon launch their own models, which by the way, we'll be talking about one of those later today, GPT-4 remains the king. And so of course I took notice when AI entrepreneur Bindu Reddy tweeted, this is insane. And just like that, we have open source Quen 72B beating GPT-4 on some benchmarks. China roars back at toxic late stage capitalism and corporatism plaguing the US. Join the global open source revolution. Now I'm not gonna comment on the late stage capitalism piece, but I certainly took note of the idea that Alibaba's open source model was beating GPT-4 on some benchmarks. However, upon closer inspection, the evals that Quen beats GPT-4 on are in Chinese. Now that's still good, but it's a little bit more understandable. And basically we have here yet another GPT 3.5 style model. Bin Wan Hui from Alibaba writes, We are proud to present our sincere open source works, Quen 72B and Quen 1.8B. Quen 72B has been trained on high quality data consisting of 3 trillion tokens, boasting a larger parameter scale and more training data to achieve a comprehensive performance upgrade. Additionally, we have expanded the context window length to 32K and enhanced the system prompt capability, allowing users to customize their own AI assistant with just a single prompt. Now, all of this is over on Hugging Face, huggingface.co slash QWEN if you want to check it out. Now, as your heart palpitations come down, there is another interesting China-US competitive story that comes through the proxy of Saudi Arabia. Bloomberg is reporting that the U.S. has forced a Saudi fund to divest from an AI chip startup that was also backed by OpenAI's Sam Altman. Basically, a company called Prosperity7, which is a venture capital arm of Saudi Aramco, invested in the $25 million round for Rain AI last year. However, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States has now forced Prosperity7 to sell its shares and unwind the deal. Now, this is not publicly announced. This is all from Bloomberg sources. This fits certainly with a larger pattern. As Bloomberg writes, the U.S. is heightening scrutiny over the activity of Middle Eastern wealth funds, part of a growing resistance towards entities regarded as having close ties with China. CFI U.S. is reviewing several multi-billion dollar deals this year on concerns they could pose national security risks. Now, the company in question, Rain AI, is a startup that, quote, designs AI chips inspired by the way the brain works. Obviously, AI chips are a central piece of the China-U.S. tension, and apparently whatever Prosperity 7 is doing is too valuable in the eyes of the Biden administration to let the Saudis and, by extension, the Chinese have access to it. Now, adding even more complication to this is, of course, the fact that all the reports suggest that Sam Altman has been working to raise billions of dollars for another novel chip project, codenamed Tigris, and has been seeking out Middle Eastern funds to do so. Bloomberg also makes clear, quote, while Altman is an early investor in Rain AI, it's not clear whether he remains active in the company or how he views the technology today. Now, moving over to the world of big tech and their AI efforts for a moment. When all was said and done, we did not get the rumored Olympus model at Amazon's reInvent, but they also didn't just leave us with the Q Enterprise chatbot that we talked about earlier in the week. We also had the announcement of the Titan Image Generator, which is akin to a Dolly 3 or a Midjourney, but has a couple notable features. First of all, Amazon claims that it has built-in guardrails against toxicity and bias. Second, every image created with Titan Image Generator has an invisible watermark that can identify it as a generative AI creation. Third, Amazon is extending copyright indemnification to customers who are using Titan's foundation models, including text-to-image. Basically, if you're building with Amazon's tools, they're going to protect you against copyright claims. Now, all of this is part and parcel of the bigger approach here, which is that Titan is not a standalone application or website but something that's available to developers from within Amazon Bedrock. Now, it's quite clear between the watermarking, the guardrails, the copyright indemnity, and the fact that this is available through Bedrock, that this is an enterprise-focused offering. This is meant to give big companies who are nervous about using something like Midjourney the comfort to still get in the image generation game. A lot of these efforts are similar to features we've seen from Adobe's Firefly, who has, at least in part, a similar target in mind. Moving over to Microsoft... Microsoft is spending a huge amount of money on building out its data capacity around the world, and it appears that the UK is going to be one of the major beneficiaries of that strategy. Announced earlier this week at a conference with UK PM Rishi Sunak, Microsoft is investing £2.5 billion or $3.2 billion into the company, including opening up data centers that house more than 20,000 GPUs. Said Sunak in a statement, Today's announcement is a turning point for the future of AI infrastructure and development in the UK. Now, the UK and Microsoft have had a little bit of a tense relationship over the last few months. 
Back in April, the UK's antitrust regulator went against Microsoft in its attempt to acquire Activision Blizzard. But subsequent to that, it waved through a restructured version of that deal, which apparently, as Reuters put it, put Britain back in Microsoft's favor. Said Microsoft President Brad Smith, Microsoft is committed as a company to ensuring that the UK as a country has world-leading AI infrastructure. Now, in addition to just GPUs, this big investment in the UK will include what Microsoft called a training plan to help ensure Britons have the skills they need to build and work with AI. Still, of course, the biggest thing in Microsoft land remains their relationship with OpenAI. And one of the things that people have wondered is whether they will get access to the board after being shocked by the board's action to fire Sam Altman just a couple of weeks ago. According to reporting from The Information, via statements from restored OpenAI CEO Sam Altman, Microsoft will be on the board in a way, but as a non-voting observer. Basically, this will allow Microsoft to have visibility into the board's debates and deliberations, but it won't be able to influence decisions in a direct way. This to me suggests some amount of resilience in the OpenAI structure. I think many folks would have thought that Microsoft would have demanded a board seat in some new governance structure after this whole hullabaloo, but apparently for now at least it's content with this additional visibility. Of course, the board story is still very much up in the air. There are three members currently, Brett Taylor, the former Salesforce CEO, who is chair, Cora CEO Adam D'Angelo, who's the lone holdover from the last board, and former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers. As part of his compromise to come back as CEO, Altman is not currently on the board, although that may not be the case forever. Now, also in Sam's first official days back as CEO, we learned that Mira Marathi had gone back to her role as CTO and that Greg Brockman will be returning as president. Now, one big open question is what happens to former board member and chief scientist Ilya Sutskever? He seemed to have been at one point an instigator of Sam's firing, but then also flipped sides and became one of the first people to sign that big letter demanding his return. In a memo to employees, Altman wrote, while Ilya will no longer serve on the board, we hope to continue our working relationship and are discussing how he can continue his work at OpenAI. Now, all of the messaging continues to be that this was not about AI safety. Outgoing board member Helen Toner wrote on Twitter, Our decision was about the board's ability to effectively supervise the company. We were not motivated by a desire to slow down OpenAI's work. That was repeated in statements from Microsoft. So, I don't know, man, for now, it still remains a mystery. Elon Musk used his DealBook Summit interview to reiterate that he wanted to hear from Ilya about what Sam had done that was so egregious that he wanted to fire him, clearly intimating that there was something there. For now, we will just have to wait and see what happens, and that will do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI Breakdown.